Thank you everyone who watched my last video and made requests for what you'd like to see next. If you haven't seen the first video in this series, the link is on screen and in the description. It covers the very basics of calculations for cell culture, including how to work out how to get specific concentrations or numbers of cells, and the all-important dilution factor. Today, I'm going to be going through one of the most important assays, the Tripan Blue assay. This is used to calculate cell viability for routine subculturing and cell tests. It is vital to understand so that you subculture your cells correctly. Other calculations for subculturing will be covered in part three of this series. Firstly, it's important to know that the Tripan Blue assay measures cell membrane integrity. So cells that don't have an intact membrane, like this one, you can see it's all broken, will let blue dye inside. So get some blue dye here. So the blue dye can come inside and it will actually stain the cells a deep blue color, almost purple. On the other hand, cells that have an intact membrane won't be stained because the dye can't get inside. This means that when you look at them under a microscope, you will have stained and non-stained cells. However, cells can be sick or dying, but still have an intact membrane. So imagine that this cell is actually sick, its nucleus is, is breaking or it's got DNA damage. It still won't be stained by the tripan blue assay. So this means it's important for you, if you're doing toxicity tests or something similar, you should also do a metabolic assay, such as an MTT assay, or a resazurin metabolic assay as well as the tripan blue because the tripan blue only gives you information about membrane integrity. However, that's not the focus of today's video. Today we're just going to talk about the tripan blue assay. First, you have a suspension of cells. You take a small sample of this, so here's our cells, you take a small amount of this, let's say 10 microliters, um, into a tube and you add 10 microliters of tripan blue. Okay, here's our tripan blue. 10 microliters. All right. And you mix them thoroughly. So you end up with a mixed 20 microliters. You then place this onto either a hemocytometer slide, like this, or there are also automated counting slides. So depending on whether you have an automated counter, you may um, be able to do this automatically or you may have to do it manually. I'm going to quickly go through both options. So if you have an automated cell counter, you put your tripan blue mixture onto the counting slide. It'll fill up the space here. You then put it into your nice automatic counter. It might look something like this with a screen. Um, so you put your slide into your counter, press, uh, it'll say something like count or measure, something like that. Um, so you press count and it will spit out a number. Now usually it will give you a live cell concentration, a dead cell concentration, and a total concentration. Okay, and there'll be numbers there. The automatic counters will usually account for the fact that you've got a 1 in 2 dilution up here. Okay, we mixed our 1 to 1 tripan blue to cells, so we've diluted our cells by a factor of 2. So the automated cell counters will usually account for that, and these numbers that they give you will um, take the dilution into account, so these will be the actual numbers. As you'll see in a moment, if you do this manually, you have to uh, take the dilution into account yourself. Going on to those manual cell counters, if you don't have an automated cell counter, you'll have to use something like a hemocytometer 
and count the cells yourself. It's a bit more time consuming, so if you have the budget, I do recommend an automatic cell counter. So this usually requires what's called a hemocytometer slide. Just do a rough uh, diagram here. So they have a section in the middle, and usually this section, if you look at it under a microscope, it has a grid. So it'll have a big grid, and then that big grid will have even smaller grids inside it. Now, people use different methods for counting and averaging on hemocytometers, um, and it often is down to how accurate you need to be. So if you're just doing a routine cell culture and you just need to know an approximate cell number or cell concentration, then you only, you only need to count a couple of squares. But if you're doing toxicity assays or if you're doing proper experiments, then you'll have to count at least five. So you put your hemocytometer under a microscope. I'm just going to do a nicer picture here. Um, and it will look something like this, your big grid. And then each of these um, nine big squares will be split into a further nine, kind of like that. Quickly draw in some cells here. And remember, you've done tripan blue staining, so some of these cells are going to be stained and some of them won't. Okay, so you start with the top left corner up here. And you count how many live cells and how many dead cells there are. Dead, live. Okay, so remember the uh, live stained cells are the unstained ones. So there are three of those and the dead cells are the stained ones. So there's one of those. Okay, so that's in the, the top left box, right? TL, top left. After you've counted that one, you want to focus on the top right square over here. So on that one, we've got one dead and two live cells, right? That's the top right. So just keeping track here. And then you want to focus on the bottom middle square there. And you can see that we've got two live and one dead. So bottom middle. You should have three counts for the unstained cells. So what we've called live here and three counts for the stained or dead cells, right? I've only counted three squares here, assuming this is for routine cell culture. However, if you were doing this for an actual assay or an experiment, remember you'd want to count at least five squares. What happens from here? Well, this is where the calculation comes in. So you need to think of the variables you have and then plug them into an equation, which I'm about to show you. So firstly, you have the number of squares counted, which we counted three. Okay, one, two, three. Next, you have the number of stained cells, which equals, we've got one, two, three. So a total of three stained cells. You then have the number, number of unstained cells. So we've got three plus two is five, plus two is seven. Seven unstained cells. And then you've got your dilution factor. Now, if this confuses you, go back to video one. But we know that we mixed our um, tripan blue and our cells in a one-to-one -one ratio. So our dilution factor is two. And most of the time, your dilution factor for this will be two. So to calculate the concentrations, we use the following formula. Live cell concentration. Okay, so remember from video one, we talked about concentration and numbers. This is a concentration and it's of our live cells. That is equal to the number, so number here, of unstained cells 
times by 10,000, and I'll show you where that comes from in a second, times by our dilution factor, just over here, it's two, divided by the number of squares counted. Now, this 10,000 number here, it seems like I've pulled that out of nowhere, but this is actually because the hemocytometer only holds a tiny volume. When you, when you look at the, the real ones, it's just the volume that fits between basically a cover slip and a slide. So it's a tiny amount of volume. So this 10,000 actually takes that tiny volume and extrapolates it to one mil. Okay, because remember we report concentrations in cells per mil. So this 10,000 allows us to go from this tiny volume that's under the cover slip to one mil. Right? And it's pretty um, consistent for hemocytometers. You can always check yours because they always come with instructions, but it's probably going to be 10,000. All right, so let's finish this, con uh, this uh, calculation. So our live cell concentration, I'm just going to shorten that, is the number of unstained cells, which we got over here to be 7, times by 10,000 to get it up to 1 mil, times by 2, which is our dilution factor, divided by the number of squares counted, which here we've got three. Okay, so our live cell concentration, we've got 70,000 times two divided by three. So that equals 46,666 ish cells and then this gets us our per mil so that's our concentration which if we were to write it in something that maybe we're more familiar with you would probably round that to five times ten to the four cells per mil so that's our live cell concentration but we also need to know our dead cell concentration and also um, our viability, right? So our live cell concentration equals 5 times 10 to the 4 cells per mil. All right. Now, the, ca the calculation for the dead cells is exactly the same. It's number of stained cells this time times by 10,000 times by our dilution factor divided by the number of squares that we counted. And that's our dead cell concentration. So our dead cell concentration is equal to, over here, our stained cells were three times 10,000 times our dilution factor, which again is two, divided by our number of squares counted, which again is three. So now our dead cell concentration, those just cancel each other out, equals 20,000 or two times 10 to the four cells per mil. Don't forget your units there. All right, so we can transfer that over to our list over here, cells per mil. So there are two key values that we wanted to get. And depending on what you were doing, that might be all the information you need. You could use this number to subculture your cells, which we'll talk about in the next video, part three. If you want to work out the viability of your cells, you can do that with these numbers. So viability equals the concentration of live cells divided by the total cell concentration, okay? Now this total cell concentration is the concentration of live cells plus the concentration of dead, 
Okay, so if you combine both live and dead cells, then that gives you your total cell number. Okay, so if we work through that, firstly, our total is equal to the live, which was five times 10 to the four cells per mil, plus the dead, which was two times 10 to the four cells per mil, so our total is equal to seven times 10 to the four cells per mil, all right? That's just simple addition. So therefore our viability, if we go back to that top equation here, is the concentration of live cells, which was five times 10 to the four cells per mil, divided by the total, so that was seven times 10 to the four cells per mil. The 10 to the four cancel out, the cells per mil cancel out, so we're left with viability equals five divided by seven, which equals about 0.71, or if we wanted that in percentage, about 71%. So our viability is 71% for these cells. So now you know the viability and cell concentration of your suspension. So these values can be used to set up experiments or do subculturing, which we'll talk about in the next video. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck with your cell culture and all of your experiments.